we all have something to say and I think it's important that uh, art reflects who you are in a sense. But in saying that, my work's always slightly uneasy. There's always, you never quite know what's going on. And it's not that I deliberately set out to do that, it's just basically that uh, that's what comes out. Things churn around in my head for a long time and then I do the work and later I come back to and think, well, what the hell is that all about? Which is probably what I should have on my epitaph eventually because that's sort of my attitude to life. It's, it's so interesting being alive and so infuriating. I grew up under the shadow of uh, the atomic war threat and as did pretty much every one of my vintage. See that all affected my art. I grew up with the Goon Show and you know spent many many hours lying with our ears up against the radio. I've always loved that surreal, mad humour and I think that's had a lot to do with my art because you can laugh at it but you can also be offended by it at the same time and uh, I don't care actually. <laughs> When I was little, I was always told, uh, don't touch that razor blade, or don't do this, don't do that. And of course, I had to do it to find out why I shouldn't do it. I had to do it myself. I was born in Thai Happy. I always liked altering things. Dad used to try and get to the newspaper before I put moustaches and glasses on everybody, or put arrows through their heads and blacked out words. It's a sort of megalomania really, isn't it? Where you just want to change things. Everything I see, I automatically think, hmm, that could just do with a tweak here and there. And all the early memories were of greenery and horses and paddocks and very early memories of these beautiful horses I wanted to be a horse when I grew up, but unfortunately I had to go to school instead and that, that was a disaster because suddenly I had to try and learn things that didn't interest me in the slightest. I was a typical could do better child and I didn't want to do better, I didn't want to do it full stop.
We moved up to Auckland basically and I've always loved English and art but I hated school and everything else was just rubbish as far as I was concerned. So uh, we moved up to Auckland at secondary school. I had two fantastic mentors who were just out of Elam, the fine arts school, and they took me to graveyards. They took me to movies, Ingmar Bergman films. They were just fantastic. They opened up my whole life to this other world that I felt really comfortable in. And one of them got me into Elam actually when I was 16, which in retrospect was far too young, but it was, uh, it was good in other ways because it set me off on that path. Colin McCann was my painting lecturer and he was actually a catalyst for me going off to Europe instead of doing my final year. He said to me one day, you don't need a piece of paper to be an artist, just go to Europe, experience life. And that was exactly what I needed. So I took off on a boat and uh, it was all downhill from there really for a while. <laughs> I couldn't wait to get out of New Zealand. I just couldn't relate to it. I was really happy out on beaches and uh, with nature, but I just, I think it started when I was about 15, I discovered Huxley's book, Doors of Perception and Heaven and Hell, and Kerouac on the road and Ferlinghetti, Corso, all the beat poets, and I just wanted to go and do what they were doing, basically. It was that wanderlust and that yearning to just discover things. I lived in Amsterdam for 10 years. It was a magical place. It was a wonderful place to discover when you're, you know, 19, 20, straight out of art school, and it was just wonderful. And I was living, of course, around the corner from all those wonderful museums. I went in with the intention of experimenting with hallucinogenic drugs. I never took heroin, never got into the hard stuff because I know that what my limits are. And um, it did me a lot of good. I'd never say to someone, you must go and take drugs, but it was good for me to just blow things apart a bit and reassemble. <laughs> You have to break yourself a few times and reassemble yourself. And you don't learn from the good stuff. Let's face it, it's the bad stuff that really has the biggest effect on you. And I did have a lot of blips along the way, but I survived. Uh, there's something inside, I think, that was just strong enough to get me through some of this stuff. And the drug thing sort of petered out. I started off doing photography. I loved Polaroids, I loved the photo booths. I was doing a lot of that. And uh, then the camera broke. And so I just started fiddling around really um, with a bit of montage and collage stuff.
I'm basically just getting rid of my own stuff by putting it on paper. I need to wander around talking to myself and uh, usually the first thing that comes to me is to basically take the piss out of some, something. I generally have that attitude that nothing's sacred. And you should be able to laugh about things. I mean, we don't know why the hell we're here. We're just all, we're all in this alone. We're all struggling along. We haven't got rule books, we've got all these books on religion, but that's not actually terrifically helpful. It's just something I really have to do, like doodling. <laughs> 